Good morning, Scallywags, and welcome to another episode in a series of enigmatic events. I'm Shpoo. I'm AJ. Are we alone in the universe? This, of course, is a question that people have been debating for centuries, thousands, perhaps oh. millions of eyewitness accounts, pictures, videos of flying saucers, lights in the skies, and little green men. Crafts that are able to hover completely motionless, completely silent moments before streaking off like lightning into the night sky. You get really excited with that, don't I you? I do, yeah. <laughs> Countless stories of little green men, tall reptilian people. Some of them look just like us. Well, maybe not just like us, but <laughs> you know what I mean. We come from France. <laughs> Even some of the oldest artwork and writings throughout history include the exact same depictions of both small and unusual looking people or even flying saucers. In ancient Egypt, there are lots of pictures and paintings of little green men or little gray men. There are also lots of depictions of people worshiping flying saucers. Not just something that looks like a flying saucer. I'm talking about something in that shape, that silver, that has light emitting from it, that are brighter than the sun even, that have rivets around it. Like things that I don't think they would have even dreamt of and they definitely could have made definitely back there. Not. I mean, we're talking, you know, actual flying saucer, like what we think of when you think of the term flying saucer. But in ancient Egypt. Even with landing gear on it. Yeah, which is just crazy. Right. I mean, thousands of years before anything <laughs> resembling that would ever even be thought of, let alone invented. Right. But, you know, aliens did build the pyramids. Oh, of course. Yeah. And of course, it, it wasn't just Egypt. UFOs and alien type creatures have appeared in artwork from all over the world and all throughout history. With every culture, back in Rome in 218 BC, where they talked about phantom ships, there were these objects that would come down from the sky and would hover over the oceans that had lights that were so brilliant that they would reflect off the water and make it look like there was a ship where there wasn't one. That's kind of cool. Or jump over to Asia in 74 BC. There was a, uh, a Roman priest named Plutarch who, uh, who talked about a battle that was suddenly interrupted. He said, a huge flame-like body was seen to fall between the two armies. In shape, it was most like a wine jar. In color, like molten silver. I mean, a wine jar. Yeah. <laughs> so fast forward quite a ways away to 1561 AD. We're in Nuremberg, Germany. The entire city saw what they described as a battle in the sky. Yeah. On an otherwise normal night, all of a sudden, this large black triangular like spear-shaped object appeared in the sky. This was followed by a huge crash outside of the city. And I'm not talking like they didn't see a crash, they just heard right. a crash outside of the city. After this loud crash, all of a sudden, the sky filled with these spheres, cross-shaped objects, all kinds of like odd shaped objects, their word, not mine, right. filled the sky and was going erratically, going toward each other. It almost looked like a fight. The account that we read, there didn't list a time frame, like how long it lasted or something, but they did say that as soon as it was over, they were just like, Phew gone just gone disappeared can you imagine if that happened today like with people with cell phones and right. recording but you know it happened in germany in a germany far far, far away. away so stories of ufo battles have been recorded throughout history in fact one of the most epic ones that i came across was basil switzerland oh, we're back in basil switzerland don't know what that means go back and watch the previous four episodes in july through august 1566 ad there was what could only be described as an inter intergalactic war taking place over the city of Basel. This was witnessed by not just like one or two people. This was the entire city. Entire it was city. It was so much witnessed, like so many people witnessed it, that they actually put it in the newspaper or what was called a broadsheet back then. And this is what the broadsheet had to say. At around 9 p.m. on July 27th, after what had been described as a clear and sunny day, something suddenly blotted out the sun as it was setting behind the horizon for the day. It was said that the sun lost its radiance and its luster until it was no bigger than the moon, at which time the sun began to weep tears of blood huh oh it it, it gets weirder don't okay. worry 
Yeah. These large red tear shaped type spheres just suddenly started filling the entire sky. And this was witnessed not just by the people in the city, but everyone throughout the entire countryside as well. Also around this exact same time, a full moon came out that was at first also bathed in red, but eventually became eclipsed just solid black. The next day, the sun still rose, but it was still just completely shrouded in whatever this red was, uh, and actually caused all the houses, the entire town, everything around was just red. Like, so like a giant filter? Yes, like, like looking giant. through a big okay. red filter over everything. Then, on the dawn of August the 7th, so several days later, people started to witness what they called black spheres coming and going with great speed and precipitation before the sun and chattered as if they led a fight. So noise, like chatter? Yes, yeah, so they're banging together, like they're maybe shooting at each other. I'm not sure what chattered means exactly, but, uh, but yeah, just another space battle happening right here on Earth. After all this chattering, many of these spheres were, uh, they were falling apart into basically just fiery red glows and then they would just vanish. Lasered out. I don't know. Basically. <laughs> they said that they actually disintegrated into nothing. And uh, basically after a time, any of the spheres that were remaining were just kind of reabsorbed into the glow of the morning sky and everything went back to normal. Like nothing ever happened. I mean, imagine if something like that was to happen over the U.S. like today. People would lose their freaking minds. I mean, it would be like end of days. You would have riots and, and looting and just mass hysteria. Cats and dogs sleeping together. Mass hysteria. <laughs> I had a Ghostbusters moment there. I know. Sorry, I need to go grab a uh, colander and put it on my head. I, I remember a couple of years ago, there was actually this big rumor that Donald Trump was actually going to announce to the world that aliens existed. I remember that. And basically someone, somebody, I don't know who, but somebody that's high up maybe in the military or an advisor or something was like, uh, sir, don't. That, that's basically going to, uh, picture like worst case scenario, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> If you do that, people <laughs> are not ready for that, so um, don't. But yeah, if, if something like that was to happen over the United States, or, you know, I mean, if, if telling the public would cause mass hysteria, imagine what an entire city seeing something happening. Seeing a battle. Seeing a battle, battle, or even just seeing confirmation, let alone seeing a battle. But just imagine what that would no, do. No, imagine the battle. Like, people would be Oh, that would, that, that would be even even better but uh but yeah i mean just ima any of it just imagine what the reaction would be the closest we've come in our time like where people could remember it fortunately is, it was way back in the 40s it was yeah um, and, and that was the battle of over los angeles yeah so on february 24th that's my birthday 1942 that's way before my birthday i'm not that old the skies in la lit up for about an hour when something entered u.s airspace something Given the time that this happened, it was about three months after Pearl Harbor, people were really on high alert and had like a lot of anxiety and paranoia that if the Japanese could attack Pearl Harbor, it's not that much further to attack the West Coast. So that's a lot of yeah. paranoia. There was also reports of Japanese submarines in the area. There was some attacks on U.S. merchant ships from Japanese. And so this was kind of a high alert situation. And then along comes February 24th, 1942. Not your birthday. Not my birthday. <laughs> uh, U.S. Naval Intelligence actually issued an alert that an attack from Japanese planes was imminent. And over the course of several hours, this would, uh, an alert would go out, it would be canceled, an alert would go out, it'd be canceled, and this kind of went on for a few hours. But basically, beyond a few flares being sent up and a couple of blinking lights that people weren't sure what they were exactly, right. nothing much happened. It was pretty uneventful. Until about 3.16 a.m., when the 37th Coastal Artillery Brigade suddenly opened fire. Over the course of the barrage, over 1,400 rounds were fired. And these were 50 caliber shells, so those do some pretty big damage. Right. 
there were several buildings, several cars that were that were damaged in the attack from uh, from shell casings falling on them, and there were even five accidental deaths that happened as a direct result of the barrage. You had three car accidents and two heart attacks that happened as a result of basically being terrified that over what this firing meant. Right. They, I mean, they thought they thought that they we were, were being attacked. attacked nonstop constant firing into the sky lasted for a solid 58 minutes and suddenly it stopped and much to everyone's surprise it was listed as a false alarm a false alarm that lasted for 58 minutes it should be noted here that after the war was over the japanese government was like yeah no we never sent anything over california so it whatever you saw it, it, wasn't, it wasn't us that. so what the hell happened? Well, over the course of the next few weeks, there were several press announcements released uh, to try to explain what happened. And try be, be the uh, optimal word there. Their reasoning was, you know, the gunmen were scared and they just started shooting and then everybody started shooting because the one started shooting. Yeah, paranoia, yeah. Yeah more stress yes um the other one was that japanese airplanes were flying over but they're commercially they're commercial jets uh, psychological warfare <laughs> to scare people but the one that actually was officially put out there was that it was a, a weather, weather balloon. balloon because of course so you have 58 minutes of shooting at a weather balloon with anti-aircraft 50, 50 caliber, caliber cannons. cannons and yet somehow you didn't shoot down the, the weather the balloon. balloon the balloon it's survived balloon. The, the 58 minutes of 50 caliber <laughs> barrage sure so this was one of if not the first time that the infamous weather balloon excuse would be used now of course you know the, after various press conferences there were so many different excuses thrown out there no one believed it in the first place you know the weather balloon thing would go on to be parodied you know to this day it's it's the number one like excuse that no one actually buys right like when people say oh well you know our government's testing new planes and stuff i i could buy that sure i could buy that if you're saying that for 58 minutes people <laughs> shot our our soldiers shot for, at for a weather balloon minutes, and it didn't bring it down an entire brigade of 50 caliber anti-aircraft cannons were unable to bring down a balloon then one i have problems with that brigade yeah, right um, <laughs> I have more faith in the American military than that. Than that. But no, it's it's just the number one trope. It's the yeah. number one, like, excuse is, oh, you see something? Oh, it's a weather balloon. <laughs> so Yeah, there's a very good reason that that's gone on to become the number one most parodied excuse or whatever you want to call it. I mean, because it is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Period. And and like I said, you know, the the they kept changing their story over and over and over again. So yeah. no one, no one in the public like actually believed a word of it. <laughs> and I mean, we know that the famous picture with the spotlights and everything that yeah. that was doctored. They they that's been admitted that photo was doctored before it was put out in the paper and everything. But nobody believed the weather balloon excuse and why would they it's it, it's it's a ridiculous excuse right so it, it had to have been something else that happened is it possible that it was a ufo flying over la there have been reports of ufo especially during wartime from different pilots from different governments all kinds of people have spotted ufos during wartime so it's totally probable there's huge boost in ufo sightings during war uh, world war one boosted a bunch of them world war a two lot of pilots actually claimed that there were ufos following, following their them. planes around during dogfights there's also like some ones from vietnam but there's a really interesting one from korea oh yes in may of 1951 pfc francis p wall and his regiment were stationed in a small village called chorwan that was about 60 miles north of seoul one night they were setting up for an artillery barrage on a small village nearby when suddenly they saw something coming down from the mountain they they said that it was glowing uh they said that it was jack-o-lantern shaped which is kind of strange but that it was kind of coming down from the mountain 
toward the village. So they watched as this uh, light just kind of came down from the mountain. It, it hovered over the village for a while. And as they started their barrage of the village, it just kind of hung out with shells popping all around it. They even said that several of the artillery shells directly hit whatever this thing was, but it didn't seem to affect it at all. It just kept kind of Did hanging just, around. Like, pop off of it? It just bounced off, explode off of it even, but it just stayed there. Just hung out. Suddenly, this thing turned its attention towards the regiment. Its color changed from orange to kind of a blue-greenish color, and it started moving toward them. As it does, it starts bobbing and weaving from side to side, acting very erratically, and, you know, starts just coming closer and closer and closer to them. So if they weren't scared before, they definitely are now. And the guys ask, you know, can we start firing at this thing? So their commander is like, you know, yes, of course, go for it. So they start popping off armor-piercing rounds from M1 rifles, and it's close enough now that they can actually hear the rounds bouncing off of something metallic. But just like the artillery shells before, no effect whatsoever. Then it attacked back. Wall stated that he and his men were, quote, swept by some form of ray that was emitted in pulses and waves that you could visually see only when it was aiming directly at you. That is to say, like a searchlight sweeps around and the segments of light, you would see it coming at you. As this light hit them, it actually caused like a burning, stinging sensation. So they all start panicking and they run for this underground bunker. <laughs> Same. Right. <laughs> As you would. While they're inside there, they're kind of peeking out of, there's like a little window inside. They're peeking out of it and they're watching it. And it just kind of hangs out for a few minutes before finally just streaking off in a 45 degree angle. They said just in a blink, it was gone. Wow. Three days later, the entire regiment is taken away off the battlefield by ambulance. They actually had to cut new roads into the jungle just to get the guys out because the majority of them couldn't even walk. Uh, they, they get them back at the hospital, they, they look them over, and they are all, all found to have dysentery and what they only called an extremely high level of white blood cells. Basically, uh, researchers who look at the case now, yeah. they say that this is basically radiation poisoning. So like what would have happened like with the people from where the bombs were dropped and right. stuff like that? Yeah. They had, well, they did. They had high white yes. blood cells. Okay. Yeah. So whatever this light was, it apparently gave them radiation poisoning. Obviously, a lot of people can say this was a hoax or it was, you know, something else. Chemical warfare, maybe, or something. Um, they might have been, yeah, PTSD going sure. through, all that stuff. So, yes, there's all the accounts and they were sick. They were taken to the hospital, but there are a lot Lot of people out there who will say well it could be something else but what about yeah but does that answer the question are we alone are there aliens well, if you watched Spoo's episode, what was it, last week? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, on the things you might have missed in 2020, you will know that the answer is actually... Maybe yes. Maybe yes. Well, at least our government says it maybe Did, Right, yes. yeah. They were actually released a statement based on something that happened that says that there are at least a couple videos where they have seen unidentified flying objects. That's not what they're calling them now, but that is what they are. The Pentagon released a statement saying these are actual videos they are not doctored and they are unidentified uh, so in this little debriefing a man by the name of Louis Elizondo uh, he was the director of the advanced aerospace threat identification program at the Pentagon basically this was in reference to three different videos that were leaked online earlier uh, I think it was actually in 2019 uh, actually no it's back as I think some of them came out in 2017 now that I think about it but anyway basically in regards to those videos Videos, like she said, yes, those videos are real. The claim was actually even backed up by a uh, an astrophysicist by the name of Eric W. Davis, who said that he's actually uh, had the opportunity to uh, kind of research some of the materials from similar vehicles, not the ones in the specific videos, uh, but similar vehicles to those. And he even went as far as to say that the vehicles in these videos are, quote, off-world vehicles that are not made on this earth, which is a huge statement in and of itself. Then, in regards to the materials that he had the chance to research, uh, he flat out said that, again, these materials are 
not of this earth and that there is no human on this earth that has the technology to even make these materials. That's a huge statement. Yes. What, and also, just bringing this up, he studied materials, which means that we have, we some. have some of these materials. Yes. It's not just three videos. Right. There are other evidences that evidence. Yes. Yeah. What's even more exciting than that is that all of this is basically kind of the first step in what they're calling a new era of transparency. Elizondo actually went as far as to say that the program that had to hide in the shadows for so many years uh, can finally step out into the light. And what is awesome is that uh, this little debriefing, so the debriefing actually took place back in March uh, with a lot of Pentagon officials and things like that. They then released it to the public in July. They said that uh, new UFO findings would be debriefed going forward every six months, which means that uh, we should be getting a new little piece of info coming up here pretty soon. And a lot of people miss this because yeah. pandemic, election, it was a it little was bit of a crazy year. <laughs> so it's good to know that we might be getting a little piece of it maybe after things have settled down a little bit, or at least we've gotten used to the new norm. Yes, but just so you guys know, it's easy to miss a story like this because, well, I mean, e even they could come out and say, you know, it's real and whatever, but it was easy to miss this story because of the pandemic and everything like that. But this, is, this isn't something that was just like on some, you know, well, my friend shared it on Facebook, <laughs> so it must be real. No, this no. was this was in the New York Times. It was covered on CNN. Uh, I mean, it was covered by all the national. It was not even just our country. We looked right. up BBC, like other countries. Yes, this was actual real thing that happened. Yes. A real thing that happened, I should say. But yes, just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> in fact, the U.S. government has beefed up their UFO research. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program has changed now to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force and moved under the offices of the Navy. Navy Intelligence, to be specific. Instead of the Pentagon. Right. They are now calling UFOs UAPs. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Hence the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force with the original name. So now I guess we just wait. Then pretty much, yeah. We got something in July. They said they're going to try to be transparent. I mean, I know a lot has happened since July in our country. And of course, I mean, uh, you know, most when they say they're going to give out new info every six months, most of that's going to go to like Pentagon officials. Then they will decide, you know, what the public actually gets together. That doesn't mean we're going to get info every <laughs> six months. It just means that we might get bread. They are now reporting something, new findings every, every six months. Every six months. months. And we might get some of the breadcrumbs. And hey, it's a step in the right direction. But, kind of like I said before, uh, until the day comes that aliens land on our <laughs> doorstep, basically, and say, hi, we're, we're here, there's... Me out it, I would love it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could have Trump come out and say, yes, aliens are real, and, and half the people aren't going to believe it. So, you know, until that day comes, we just, nothing much changes. You're going to have skeptics. Right. But of course, until that day comes, you know, we'll just have to sit back, be patient, and keep watching the skies. So I guess the real question is, what do you think? Are we alone in the universe? Or are we being visited by beings from other worlds? Maybe many other worlds. Yeah, could be. I mean, they... We have so many different descriptions of different way, kinds of shapes of planes and peep in the creatures. And the way that I always like to put it is, look at your screen. You see that little speck of dust that's so small you can barely even make it out that's <laughs> right there on the corner of your screen? That is everything that we know. That is the known universe. And everything else is everything else. Well, I just... How can we be so arrogant to believe that we are the only intelligent life out there. It, or even the most intelligent life out there, for that matter. We can't. I we, mean, yeah, it, can. the human race is very narcissistic <laughs> in nature. I, and not that we're all narcissists. I'm just saying the human race is. To think that um, our planet is one, the only planet that could su sustain intelligent life that could do something. We're also a newer planet. Yeah. We're, like, if you look at different suns, our sun is, like, pretty young. Pretty, new, pretty young. It's not an old, old sun. Yeah. So if there's other planets cir circling an older sun, they've had years and years and years, maybe millennials. Yons. Millennials? Millennials. <laughs> they're millennials on other planets. Oh. That's good to know. At least they've got that issue to deal with. No wonder they're trying to come here. <laughs> You're going to keep that in, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> You're welcome. 
It's, it's supposed to go on a blooper, but he'll keep that in. Do you like how I left me. that? Like, still hear you talking about leaving it in as the uh, the end cap came up on last week's video? Yeah, I know. I was pretty I proud know. of that one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys. <laughs> Be sure to follow us on all of our social media. So right to the end. Yeah. Right to the end. That is going to wrap it up, though. But yeah. but yeah, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. All the places. Yep, pretty much. And, you know, make sure that you do, uh, you know, do the things, the YouTube <laughs> things. You know, make sure you like and share and comment. We love most comments. Most importantly, subscribe because uh, we do have five days worth of content every week. I promise. We've had for the last two weeks for various He's reasons. He's working on number five. The the Friday I've had I, I've had two separate issues happen with Friday's video two weeks in a row. But I promise you, <laughs> this week happen. it's coming. <laughs> so, I'm, all, I'm only on the channel twice a week. That'll be enough. Tuesdays and Thursdays <laughs> you can catch this show. Uh, and then there's other stuff on the other days as well. But uh, yeah, drop us a comment. That's uh, that's another thing. Drop us a comment. He let responds us, to almost all the comments. I do. Uh, but let us know your theories. Let us know your your thoughts and most importantly let us know what you want to see next in this series of enigmatic events thanks for watching did you just wink <laughs> that was cheesy i know <laughs> see you next time <laughs>